pleasant good morning. These devotions are brought to you by the Anglican Diocese of the Bahamas and the Turks and Caicos Islands. I am Deacon Cameron Saunders and I am from the Parish of Christ the King, located in Ridgeland Park West on the island of New Providence. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, Grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our reading comes from our Eucharistic readings for the day from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, verses 17. Through 26. Then the high priest took action. Uh, he and all who were with him, that is, the sect of the Sadducees, being filled with jealousy, arrested the apostles and put them in the public prison. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the, door, the prison doors, brought them out, and said, Go. Stand in the temple and tell the people the whole message about this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple at daybreak and went on with their teaching. When the high priest and those with him arrived, they called together the council and the whole body of the elders of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought in. But when the temple police were there, went there, they did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported, We found the prison securely locked and the guards standing at the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priests heard these words, they were perplexed about them, wondering what might be going on. Then someone arrived and announced, Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. Then the captain went with the temple police and brought them, but without violence, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. Here ends the lesson. In our New Testament reading for today's Eucharist, we hear the story of the second imprisonment and the miraculous release of the apostles of Jesus. It seems like deja vu, as these men were indeed repeat offenders, proclaiming Christ in the exact place where, the, where they committed the original, original offense. Yet if that were not enough, risk and danger, we should note that the apostles may have been detained in the very prison Jesus spent some time in before his own crucifixion. Most would then question these acts and the motives behind them. Yet, a sobering, ju sobering judgment may be found in a story about the late De Archbishop Desmond Tutu. On a February day in 1988, a group of ministers representing nearly every denomination of South Africa gathered in, in a ca cathedral in Cape Town. After praying, they linked arms and marched toward the government building to deliver a petition to the Prime Minister. They didn't get far. Outside the cathedral, a line of riot police blocked their path and ordered them to disperse. They knelt down at the policemen's feet. The police arrested the ministers and dragged them away. One of these so-called criminals was Desmond Tutu. Like Moses before Pharaoh, he petitioned his petitions rather were refused. And like Moses' story, this one got much worse before it got better. Yet, many years earlier, Tudu had gotten a delicious taste of freedom on a trip across the sea. You see, he studied in London as a young Anglican priest, where life was a delightful shock. In South Africa, every police officer was a potential enemy, empowered to detain a black person for any reason. In London, the police were actually actually polite. Tudu walked the streets late at night just for the pleasure of not being arrested. In Hyde Park, he heard speakers expound on any issue, no matter how outrageous, 
while the police stood by, not to beat them and haul them off to jail, but to protect them. Once, even while waiting in a bank line, a white man cut in front of him. The bank teller told the man to wait his turn. Tutu was astonished at such an act of justice, which would never have happened in his native country. After returning to South Africa, Tutu began a long and painful battle for freedom. Over the next three decades, he preached and pleaded and protested for his people's freedom. He struggled against racist, the racist government on one side and those who sought freedom through violence on the other. He was the target of arrests, censures, slander statements, and death threats. He risked his life to save people from mobs of his from mobs of his own people who executed those they believed were government spies. The rising tide of anger raised the violence level on both sides until nearly everyone gave up hope. But Tutu re refused to give up, and ever so slowly hope began to spread. Soon after his arrest, Tutu, now an archbishop, prophesied the outcome of his efforts in a sermon. We must say to our rulers, especially unjust rulers, such as this in this land, you may be powerful, indeed very powerful, but you are not God. You are ordinary mortals. God, the God whom we worship, can't be mocked. You have already lost. You have already lost. Let us say to you, let us say to you nicely, you have already lost. We are inviting you to come and join the winning side. In countless prayers during all those years of struggle, Tudu had asked one simple question, O oh God, how long? He finally got an answer. Five years after the many, many more struggles, bombings and executions, black South Africans voted for the, their first national elections. And on, the and on the balcony of Cape Town's City Hall, before a crowd of 70,000 people, Tutu introduced South Africa's first black president, Nelson Mandela. Some may think of the apostles' reaction and think of the old adage, once bitten, twice shy. And then others may shrink or even retire from service altogether. But here, the apostles and with Archbishop Tutu, we find people who had something stronger than fear something that was bigger than themselves. They had an unshakable hope, and that, combined with the power of God the Holy Spirit, inspired unshakable determination for the work, for rather for the continued work of Christ in the world. You see, the apostles had seen the risen Lord, touched and ate with him, as he promised, watched him ascend, as he promised, received God the Holy Spirit, as he promised, and they were now working loving and serving, making converts in his name and by his cross, as he promised. These men had gone from being come and see disciples to now go and tell apostles, and nothing would deter them from the glad work of witnessing for their Lord. In this story from the Acts of the Apostles, we hear again the motif of obeying God rather than, rather than human beings being played out again before the council. And yet, what about us, some, these, us Christians rather, some 2,000 years later? In a, world increasingly unhost in a world increasingly hostile toward Christ and his church, where among the ranks of, his, of this church are casual, commercial, social, even fair-weather Christians, where there are even hypocrites and wolves among the sheep, can we be bold in the face of hostility? and true risk for the Christ and his gospel? I wish to offer that yes, yes we can be bold, and yes we will, because it is our turn to take up the task of Christ's body in the world. Bishop Tutu saw violence, and yet behind and beyond on the horizon, he saw freedom and a new South Africa. May we be bold in Christ today. May we be, let us be bold rather for Christ today. Be encouraged to be resurrection people, 
and illumine a world with the love and grace of God and the hope of a gospel of redemption and reconciliation. And you as rather, you too have seen and tasted the risen ascended Lord. Now you like the apostles must go and tell. Let us pray. The grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for listening to these devotions. And if possible, please share with a friend.